In accordance with the provisions of the Open Public Meeting Act in JSA, <coughs> could you please mute yourselves? Oh, thank you. Amended to 2006 C7 BS2, the Asbury Park Board of Education has provided adequate notice of this meeting by sending a notice of the time, date, location, and to the extent known, the agenda of this meeting to the Asbury Park Board of Education for January 3rd, 2020, by email. Copies of this notice have also been placed at the Administration Building, Bulletin Board, District Schools, Asbury Park Municipal Building. Asbury Park Police Department and filed with the city clerk on January 3rd, 2020. In view of the COVID-19 public health emergency, the emergency orders and directives at the federal, state, and local levels and consistent with the Open Public Meetings Act in JSA 1046 as amended by PL 2020-C11 OPMA, the Asbury Park Board of Education conducting this meeting, originally designated to take place at Bradley Elementary School remotely, using video and or telephone conferencing technology. The public has been advised that this venue and format change and instructions have been provided in order to assess the meeting and to participate during the public comment sections of the meeting. You will need to dial in, log, log in to the remote meeting platform in order to attend the remote meeting. PL 2020-C11, which permits remote conducted meetings was signed into law by Governor Murphy on Friday, March 20th, 2020, effective immediately. The board recognizes the importance of open transparency and public access and participation in its work. In view of the current crises in the brave new world in which we live, the board asks all citizens to bear, to bear with us as we work to meet the health, safety, welfare, and educational needs of our students, staff, and all members of the Asbury Park community. Our mission statement, the Asbury Park School District will provide all students with a comprehensive and progressive education where everyone possesses the skills and character to succeed in a diverse, evolving global society. Mr. Hastings, roll call, please. Ms. Satya? Here. Mr. Grillo? Here. Ms. Jones? Mr. Lotaraka? Here. Ms. Lazinski? Here. Mr. Pinkney? Mr. Saunders? Ms. Breach? Here. Sabas Anderson? Here. Please stand for uh, the flag salute. Our pledge of allegiance to the flag. The United States of America and to the Republic for one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We do not have any presentation. Madam Superintendent, do you have a report? I do. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. First, I want to begin uh, my superintendent's report acknowledging the 17 retirees from the Asbury Park School District. Um, their names are Nancy Ormack, Walter Barrett, Kathleen Crossno Hair, Walter Donaldson, Lynn Dunn, Diana Irving, Pamela Ox Farrell Oxner. Allison Guarneri, Amy Cotton, Maria Laura Ruiz, Joan Maggio, Wilbur Mallory, John O'Leary, Sherlane Pagano, Barbara Paskin, Marjorie Padnoy, Grace Reeves. Out of those 17 retirees, I'm delighted to share with you that seven have had 25 plus years of service. Nancy Omak, 27 years. Kathleen Cross No Hair, 32 years. Lynn Dunn, 25 and a half years. Diana Urban, 30 and a half years. Amy Kanat, 26 years. Wilba Mallory comes in, ranking in the highest number of years of service at 32 years. 
Chris Reeves, 25 and a half years of service. Thank you so much for your service to our students. In compliance and in keeping with the governor's executive order, we will make sure that the acknowledgement and recognition of your service will be mailed to your home. Thank you so much for calling in tonight to be a part of us recognizing you. Thank you, Mrs. Gray. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that was Lynn. Done. That was me, Lynn. <laughs> so during these unprecedented times and we have this unprecedented uh, way of handling things, I'm not sure if um, our retirees, uh, I know you can't, you're, you're not visible to the public, but again, we just want to thank you and we appreciate you being on the line. I know there are many of you on tonight's call. Thank you again for calling in. Okay, um, the next item I would like to acknowledge is I have great pride in sharing that we've had 16 graduates from our Dream Academy program. While Brookdale had a virtual graduation for them, they will also have a live graduation. And so we're delighted that um, they were recognized also in our city. And I want to thank our board members for and making the connection with our community so that they were able to be recognized at the Stone Pony on the Stone Pony marquee. Thank you, Vice President uh, Breach, for just uh, making sure that that contact and communication occurred. And many thanks to Caroline O'Toole from the Stone Pony for being so invested in our students, as well as so many of the other community members. Um, I want to provide a little more context beyond just our Dream Academy students, for whom I'm very proud of. 82.4% of our graduating seniors, 82.4% during these unprecedented times have shared post-secondary graduation plans with us. 57.1% of our graduating student seniors will be attending a college or a technical school. 25.3% of them will be employed and have secured employment. And out of the 17.6% of our graduating seniors that are unconfirmed, they are unconfirmed because they have either not done one of the following. They haven't actually accepted a commitment to a college or they have reported employment, but the employment has not been confirmed. And then the last category is undecided. So this is one of the first times in our history where we're able to report such record high numbers of post-secondary plans for our high school seniors. And what is extremely remarkable is that it happened during these unprecedented times. You often hear me talk about problematunity. Clearly, this problematunity has opened up a whole new world of possible for our students for whom we are celebrating and very glad uh, to share in that success. Additionally, additionally, we have a record high number of students that will be attending uh, colleges that include Alabama A&M University, the Benito Juarez Autonomous University of OAXA, Berkeley College, Bloomfield College, Brookdale Community College, Caldwell University, Columbia College, Delaware State, Fairleigh Dickinson University, Kane University, Lincoln Technical School, Monmouth County Vocational Technical School, Monmouth University, Morgan State University, Ohio University, Pennsylvania College of the Arts, Ryder University, Rowan University, Rutgers University at Brookdale, Scotland Campus, Shaw University, Texas Southern University, University of Advancing Technology, University of Pittsburgh at Bradford, William Patterson University. I want to commend the staff, the director of school counseling and her team, the guidance counselors, our acting director, I mean, our 
of Student Services and Acting Principal, Dr. Christy Howard, Clem Bramley, our Director of Curriculum Instruction, and all of their teams for ensuring that during these unprecedented times, we still made sure that our students excelled and excelled at high levels and were able to satisfy whatever requirements were necessary. The, um, the universities also, like the schools, changed their, their deadlines and their whole offices and their whole office staff situations were very different. Everyone was working remotely, but through it all, our students were able to apply. They received over $300,000 collectively in scholarship opportunities. And some of our board members and community members have very generously provided and continue to provide scholarship opportunities, either individually or through nonprofit organizations that they work with. And I just want to thank you on behalf of our students. Um, these are unprecedented times, and they have really stepped up in an unprecedented way. Thank you so much. As we continue to right size our district, that means we will have to do more with less, and we have to continue to understand that there will be times where we have to kind of camp up and bunk in and move it along. But I'm very delighted to say that we continue to move forward in terms of our reorganization plan. We have to consolidate and right size our district. We were uh, on that path prior to the pandemic and we remain focused and on course even through the pandemic. That completes my report. Okay, well it's awesome news, Madam Superintendent. Thank you. Madam President? Yes? I'd just like to say one thing just real quickly. Um, you know, besides the uh, the staff that that are retiring this year congratulations to them and you know best of luck to their future but also as far as the stone pony and recognizing the uh the dream academy graduates um barbara lazinski uh board member also helped immensely with getting that organized so i just want to just do a shout out uh to miss lazinski for helping me uh facilitate that also thank you miss lazinski Okay, and so now we're going to go into um, public participation in accordance with board policy 0167. Mr. Hastings. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, our first email is from Ms. Lynn Johnson to the Asbury Park Board of Education members. I'm writing this letter with concerns of the impact that losing art in elementary schools will have on the students, with SEL as a huge drive in helping our children succeed. What, what, are, what better way to do little children have to express themselves than through art? It is their time to let their feelings out through multimedia approaches and getting their mind and bodies right to continue their academic day. There are times when students have used art to communicate how they feel and if something is bothering them. Especially in the elementary level, it is much easier for students to communicate through drawing uh, than using their words. Please reconsider this decision and see how valuable art in elementary school is. Our next comment is from Maureen Casey. My name is Maureen Casey. I live at 1670 West Princeton Avenue in Brick. I've been employed as a speech therapist for the Asbury Park School District for over 30 years. I'm also lucky enough to be the secretary for the APEA and a building representative, which allows me to interact with so many amazing colleagues in good times and bad. I would like to start by saying that this has been a very challenging time for educators. However, so many of us have riven to the challenge. So to say I was saddened to hear about the elimination of the subject of art at the elementary level is an understatement. When I first started as a speech therapist, it never dawned on me that children needed to be taught how to hold a scissor, how to hold a crayon, how to draw shapes, form the letters in their names, colors to describe objects, etc. I thought that was all part of child development. Boy, was I wrong. Then this awful pandemic, and with each parent I spoke to, they said how they needed supplies to complete the work at home. Not only myself, but many of your teachers dropped off crayons, pencils, paint, scissors, paper, coloring books, tape, etc., to mailboxes in town. How will our students express their creativity? As educators, we all have a talent we share with our students, and I can't imagine kindergartners 
to third graders not having the opportunity to enter an art room with a qualified specialist who wants to share their love of seeing things through rose-colored glasses. Please consider finding a way to save this program for the little ones who need it so desperately. An elementary school without art will never look the same. Let's all work together uh, to be creative. Our next comment uh, is from Kawizi03. Hello, I am a student at the Asbury Park High School, and I ask, I am here to ask to not terminate Mr. Quick from the Asbury Park High School District. The reason for this is that Mr. Quick is one of the best teachers that the school has, and he supports us students greatly. Mr. Quick has helped us in many ways, like art, graphic design, tech troubles, and he has been like a big father figure to us students. He has been there for us even in our saddest times, his presence gives us students happiness, and it should not be taken from us at all. So please do not fire Mr. Quick from the Asbury Park High School. Thank you. Our next comment is Garza. I speak on my behalf and the past students of Mr. Quick. The budget termination of one of the best well-known teachers in Asbury Park High School is one of the most imaginable decisions the board directors can ever decide. He's a teacher that cares about his students no matter how disruptive or opinionated they may be. He has the utmost respect for all of us. I may have been uh, only been in Asbury Park for a year, but if it wasn't for Mr. Quick, I wouldn't have discovered my love of art and found the people that I surround myself with if it wasn't for continuous support. I continuously achieved multiple wins on art contests and had the utmost opportunity to have an art class in Brookdale. If it wasn't for him giving me the courage and self-confidence to not be afraid to try new things and take advantage of every opportunity that presents itself to me. I remember him as the teacher that glued his students together with art, creativity, and respect, and will continue to do so. Budget costs shouldn't put the teachers that have the most impact to be terminated. Uh, due to those actions, you'll be jeopardizing the creativity amongst the students by taking away a teacher that has a huge impact in the way we uh, preserve ourselves. Terminating is a decision that myself and others object to and think that firing him is a decision based on lack of judgment and lack of interest in knowing your state. <laughs> I hope your final decision you take into consideration the consequences and the aftermath of your actions at the district that is based in a city that is brought to life with art and music. I do send regards to the board of directors and I hope that you'll do the same for your students. Our next comment is from Claire Arcu. Hello, I'm a student at Asbury Park High School. Based on some research, I heard they are planning to terminate Mr. Quick. Please do not do that. Mr. Quick is one of the best teachers at our school, not only because he does art, but because he helps the students mentally too. He is one of us. If he wasn't here, I don't think I could have had the last two school years. I don't think have this class and he helps me this much. What do you think about the ones uh, who do have his class? A lot of the kids at the school are artists. Some kids fail art and fail at all their other classes. I am part of a dream academy, which can be extremely stressful. But after school, or during lunch, art, and especially Mr. Quick, helps me relax. What's a school without an art teacher? I want to be a graphic designer, and Mr. Quick can help me accomplish that. I know a lot of kids who have dreams based on the art field. My skills have improved majorly since I was when I started, thanks to him. Trust me when I say Mr. Quick gives us an early start, and no matter how busy he is, he's always ready to help us. He takes uh, from some of us, there's nothing else, and we'll be even less motivated for school. It's going to be a disaster without him. Mr. Quick is of a teacher and a person. He's going to do all the things that he does at school. Arts, the computers, the morale of the students, the motivation, the fun. Not only students, but teachers love him too. I don't think the school will benefit from terminating him. The district might have the financial they need if they fire him, but money can't solve everything. I think someone I can turn to and talk 
when I need to, uh, to have all the money in the world. Please, I am begging for him to stay. Our next email is from Deb Sawyer. Who we may concern, I write to emphatically oppose to art education cuts in your school district. Arts complement STEM courses and adds to the social success for students. Participation in the arts promotes proficiency in communication and a sense of community among the student body. Even imposed cuts or proposed cuts to the Asbury Park School District, which has a student body with many disadvantages. Taking the arts away tells these children that their needs and ideas are not valued. Art encourages children to express their emotions and provides a productive press. Art engages children on many different levels and promotes visual learning, other developmental skills. Children, especially those with special needs, may not yeah. learn in sense with books and writing. Arts education not only inspires, but also motivates yeah. students to enjoy learning. Yeah. Why take this away from children who are socially and economically disenfranchised? Please do not cut arts education from those who need it the most. Excuse me, Mr. Hayes. <laughs> Can I have your attention on this? We There's we're getting a lot of feedback, so could you please mute? So that's what I want. Excuse me, Miss uh, Abbas Anderson. That's what I wanted to tell you. I'm watching the screen, and it looks like whoever C2 is is the one that keeps uh, blocking in and out. But the mute, the uh, mic is muted, but they keep showing up. So I don't know who C2 is. We're looking for. It's caller 22. Thank you. Our next uh, email is from Kimberly Traub. Mm -hmm. I'm a graduate of the College of New Jersey and the arts provided me with a path to higher education. As a troubled kid, I found solace, belonging, and a voice in my art class. From there, teachers were able to guide my interests into a practical path, learning career sustaining skills and graphic design. Most people I know who are scientists also play music. Music and math are connected. Eliminating arts is short-sighted and ignores paths of possibility for many students. Our next is from Ms. Lisa Boynick. Good evening. In reviewing the board meeting agenda, it come to my attention that the district will be cutting two art positions. While this may seem like a money-saving strategy, a strong art program has a long-lasting benefit for students. For an example, in an era in a district where social-emotional learning is valued, I was taken aback by a reduction in the art program. A strong art program especially supports those students who embrace art to express and deal with so many emotional traumas. In addition, the art graphic design teacher at the high school, Ralph Quick, is much more than just an art teacher. Over the years, he has become a mentor to the administration teachers and students alike. His room is vibrant during lunchtime with students who prefer to do artwork while eating lunch rather than go to the hustle and bustle of the cafeteria. He is also available before and after school for support for administration, teachers, and students. He has taken on the unofficial role of tech coach at the high school, readily helping when anybody needs help or tech support. His role at the high school is priceless. Please consider these points when making your final decision. Our next is from Ms. Laura Dalton, 928 Windward Ave, Beachwood. Dear members of the Asbury Park Board of Education. The values of a society gleam in their efforts of what they promote and what they hold as a standard for educational pursuit. Values create and drive budget decisions, but isn't it possible that we have been led astray? Why is it that what we need for the human condition often gets pushed aside in efforts to keep up with the modern world? The arts play a crucial or critical role in human development. I'm not sure if what I'm going to say will change anything, but the arts can save lives. Arts and education can open doors for freedom and communication in ways that words cannot always express. 
a lot of students need and crave this outlet. Art education is something that should be cultivated and honored as we teach students to express themselves and create, problem solve, plan, engage, synthesize. Art should be taught not only by a trained art educator, but it should be held in high regard and taught weekly to every child in the district. Social and emotional learning is a prominent new aspect of uh, focus in education, and the arts have a crucial role in this. With budget concerns, we should look to be more creative, find ways to not only keep the arts program the way it has been, but to be even more aggressive with its role in education. I quote an art teacher from Bancroft Elementary, Nikki Keenan, who states, it's my professional opinion that making deep cuts to the art department and other special programs doesn't allow the district to adequately educate all students to the developmental standards of the whole child approach, which separates us from private and charter schools, Keenan said. Some students are in school because of specials in art and are not going to take the traditional route to a successful career in life. They need art and other programs for their careers and their future. The arts are not electives, they are the tapestry of life. Please maintain and even still more enhance arts education in Asbury Park for the sake of our children. Yours in education, Laura Dalton. From Ms. Christine DeMarsico. As an educator and a mother, I'm extremely concerned about the elimination of the art program at the elementary school. Art education in primary grades plays a significant role in child development, such as in motor skills, language development, cultural expression, and in decision making. Students in early education use art to express themselves and expand ideas that they are unable to articulate because they haven't mastered language. So art education is a key aspect to literacy in elementary school. Art education can only be taught by a highly qualified educator and expert in the field. If we cut this important subject, students in the most vulnerable developmental stage will suffer educationally and will suffer educationally and psychologically. As community members, it is our responsibility to stand up for our students and deny abolishing art. In addition, as a teacher at the high school, terminating Ralph Quick will hurt the students at the high school. I've worked with Mr. Quick for the past 15 years. He is the most incredible teacher, mentor, and colleague who demonstrates integrity and excellence daily. Not only is his attendance the best in our school, he also mentors several students, decorates our building, organizes our technology, and assists with testing. He performs these tasks without recognition because he is only motivated by improving our school home. He is truly an asset to the Asbury Park High School family. He has taught several different types of art, from graphic design to standard art. He always helps students with attendance and he comes in early and stays late, all to benefit our students. He always puts children first, so removing this treasure from our family will hurt the high school community. Thank you for your concern and attention to this important matter. Have a blessed day. Our next is from Amy DeFilippo, 391 West Park Ave, Oakhurst. Dear Superintendent Gray and members of the Asbury Park Board of Education, I would like to comment on the decision to abolish art classes in elementary school by sharing some anecdotes about our virtual learning experience these past few months. I noticed that several students who were not motivated to participate in synchronous and asynchronous instruction in reading, writing, and math were motivated by the visual art activities of our art teacher, Ms. Costanza. One of my ELL students who just came to this country a few months ago and has very little English, participated in every single art class and activity. He began to speak English more in class when he was able to share his art projects. By the end of the school year, he was participating in live classes in all subjects because his confidence bloomed. Several students were also able to share their fears about the pandemic through their artwork, but weren't able to articulate their thoughts in conversation or writing. When they began explaining their art projects, it became clear that they were upset and we were then able to discuss their fears as a class. Even during a normal school year, there are always students who come back from our class more focused and calm than they were before the class. That translates into more academic achievement and social emotional growth for these students. I hope you will reconsider your decision to end art classes in the elementary school. 
Our next email is from Pamela Rouse, to whom it may concern. I'm writing to ask that the board reconsider the canceling of art classes in the elementary schools. Art is an integral part of our students' learning, and it also provides an arena where the children can express themselves. Additionally, I think it is very therapeutic for our students. As such, I hope that the board would consider the importance of keeping art in our schools. Our next email is from uh, Candy Cruz. Hello, Asbury Park School System. It came across my attention that a, you are wanting to terminate such an amazing art teacher. In all honestly, I am confounded on the issue of termination of a person who showed me what I was truly capable of doing in art. I cannot let someone who pushed me to do better be terminated. I, for one, stand for all those who strongly agree with me. Mr. Quick is a foundation to the Asbury Park School System. All the creativity that makes our school stand out is because of him. The artwork around the school is because of him. If it weren't for him, our school would look so plain without any artwork hung up. So in a respectful way, I would ask you to reconsider on what you uh, think you're doing is right. Please and thank you sincerely, uh, Ms. Riano Cruz. Our next is from Ms. Laura Golden, 30 Memorial Parkway, Atlantic Highlands, to whom it may concern. The following letter is in reference to the proposed elimination of two positions of arts education within the Asbury Park School District. I implore you not to cut the positions of Mr. Ralph Quick and Ms. Deborah Falcone. All grade levels need certified art teachers. The arts are necessary for so many reasons. The arts are especially essential for our students at this time in history. Visual art teaches far more than how to produce a beautiful piece of artwork. Visual art allows children to express themselves, their thoughts, feelings, and ideas. Visual art teachers, students, SEL, social emotional learning skills, that they can use throughout their life to help themselves and others. It teaches students about humanity, empathy, compassion, history, and social justice. Visual art empowers students to create not just artwork, but a better, better world. Visual art teaches children that their vision and voice are powerful and purposeful. As a teacher at Asbury Park High School, a parent of children who attend Asbury Park High School and a former Asbury Park resident, I have firsthand knowledge of the exemplary work our art teachers do and the impact it makes on our students. Ralph Quick is a stellar teacher. I have the honor of working with him at the Asbury Park High School. Not only does he teach multiple levels of comprehensive art and computer graphics, he also assists the district in a myriad of ways. He helps with all areas of technology from state testing to troubleshooting computers. He creates a peaceful, welcoming haven for all students to learn and grow. The list of what he does is far too long for this letter. His dedication and caring are unmatched. One of the greatest staff members our district has is Mr. Ralph Quick. Our students need and deserve certified art teachers, K to 12. Please do not eliminate these positions. Our next is from Carl, Carlton Wilkinson, 30 Memorial Parkway, Atlantic Islands. Dear Superintendent and Asbury Park School District Board of Education members, I'm writing to implore you not to cut art education positions at Asbury Park schools, particularly the elementary schools. I've been involved in the arts, education, journalism, and business my entire adult life, and I still teach at the College of New Jersey each fall. I'm also a former resident of Asbury Park and a parent of two children. My daughter graduated from Asbury Park High School. From these experiences, I've come to know firsthand the opportunity that early education in the arts unlocks in students. It is impossible to quantify, but the minds of young people, their horizons, their emotional intelligence, their confidence, their understanding of the world are all expanded through the vehicle of early arts education. The process of regular arts classes is a key component to producing better citizens. In my experience, what makes a difference is dedicated teachers. Importantly, students need to be inspired to appreciate, to analyze, and to create for themselves. Casual exposure to the arts, through after school programs or school trips or weaving mention of the arts into other subjects cannot achieve those outcomes without dedicated teachers. 
I hope you'll make the right decision with regard to these positions. Thank you. <clears throat> Ms. Jennifer Krasta, or Kraska, to whom it may concern, please reconsider cutbacks on art funding in Asbury Park. Art is essential and enriching part of every child's and teen's education, and removing it would be a detriment to a student's learning. As a frequent visitor to Asbury Park and a student of the New Jersey public school system myself, I can't imagine how different my education would have been without art. Please take another look at the budget and see if there are other creative ways to make sure art education doesn't get lost. Best regards. Our next is from Dot Elephant. To whom it may concern, I'm writing to voice my strong opposition to the elimination of the visual arts program in the elementary schools of the Asbury Park School District. As a school psychologist in the Asbury Park School District for the last 15 years, I've had the opportunity to work with our students at every grade level. I'm acutely aware of our students' academic needs, social emotional needs, and the systemic societal issues that gravely impact their growth and opportunities for success. Numerous peer-reviewed studies demonstrate that education in the arts leads to greater academic success and better social-emotional functioning. For students who have suffered trauma, as a great number of our students have, visual arts is one of the most important ways that a child can process, cope with, and begin to heal from that trauma. Visual arts does not rely on any particular level of academic functioning, it is not contingent upon being able to speak English, and it is a natural activity and outlet that can be that can benefit all children. It is often through visual art that children make their first connections with their feelings, their strengths, and then with others. Empirical studies show unequivocally that children from lower socioeconomic groups and children of color have greater academic and social success when they have the opportunity to flourish within an integrated arts curriculum. Visual art is the medium that comes most naturally to a child, and it should be a part of every child's educational experience. In this time of pandemic, racial injustice and economic insecurity, our students are dealing with stress and trauma that is beyond that which previous generations have dealt with. Now more than ever, uh, now more than ever before, our students need to be given ways to express their fears, their concerns, their losses, as well as their triumphs. Visual art is the natural way for our students to do that. Only when they are able to process those feelings and experiences will they be able to function as successful students. So I respectfully implore the board to maintain the visual arts program in our elementary schools. Please give our youngest and most vulnerable students the opportunity that they deserve to live up to their fullest potential. Do not take away art and severely limit and impede their social, emotional, academic success. Next is from Joanna Naratil from Morristown. Former First Lady Michelle Obama once noted, the arts are not just a nice thing to have or to do if there's free time or if one can afford it. Rather, paintings and poetry, music and fashion, design and dialogue, they all define who we are as a people and provide an account of our history for the next generation. Please consider this philosophy in your deliberations on whether to cut arts education positions in the Asbury Park school system. I am a New Jersey native, a daughter and sister to New Jersey educators, and a friend to several people in the Asbury Park school system. I know how they have struggled to bring a full circle approach to teaching, not just STEM, 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 not just the three R's. Of course, math, science, literacy, but also critical appreciation of aesthetics, understanding of cultural differences, of changes in history, all depicted, sculpted, performed, and set forth in the arts. I've also personally benefited from arts education in New Jersey. As a painfully shy child navigating school and college, sometimes art and music classes were the only places I could communicate without fear. Being able to channel my thoughts through art and music, not playground banter, saved me. I was able to find a community, tell my story, and find my place in the continuum of human experience with the tools and coaching of people like Mr. Cordes, Caritas, and Mrs. Campbell, 
uh, Mansfield Township Elementary, Mrs. Kugelmeyer, Warren Hills Regional, Dr. Finchner Rathis, Charles Kumnick from Trent State College. These art and music educators help me find and mold my voice through French horns, trumpet, pencil, paper, clay, and metal. Through arts education, we have a chance to reach children in a different way, to give them a new method of communication and emotional release, to foster creativity that may bring them peace or save our planet. Removing these opportunities punishes them and diminishes us. To conclude, I offer another quote from the formidable Mrs. Obama. The arts and humanities define who we are as a people. That is their power to remind us of what we each have to offer and what we will all have in common. To help us understand our history and imagine our future. To give us hope in the moments of struggle and to bring us together when nothing else will. In these fractured times, can we afford to ignore this truth? Yes. Our next is from Barry Seaman. Dear superintendent and board members, I'm writing to let you know that I am disappointed that the art program is being eliminated at the elementary schools. This is something that I think directly impacts our students. Art is something that my students have enjoyed in the past and is a great outlet for many of them. This is an area where some of my students over the years have been able to really shine and show their artistic talents and abilities. As recently as during our remote learning, I had students who entered the Deal Like Art Contest and had made various different art projects that were posted to the art teachers, Mrs. Costanza. Looking at the many posted paintings, drawings, and projects that were made, I was really in awe of the talents on display. I hope that this is something that will be reconsidered because I believe it is very important and serves a vital need in our, for our students. Thank you for taking my concern into consideration. Donna Facara, early childhood float teacher Bradley, the Asbury Park Board of Ed. Art instruction helps children with the development of motor skills, language skills, social skills, decision making, risk taking, and inventiveness. Visual arts teachers. Uh, visual arts teach learners about color, layout, perspective, and balance, all techniques that are necessary in presentations, visual or digital, of academic work. Please do not cancel the art program for the students of Asbury Park School District. Our art program is, in reality, a project-based learning experience where children create for different real-world situations. I can speak firsthand in the involvement of our art instructors and our students for their creativity and dedication and professing pride in their culture or what they believe in. Some examples include the autism awareness campaigns, Hispanic, African, and Haitian cultural celebrations. Art is also a way for students to express their feelings and a method of self-regulation for many. Art therapy is a mental health modality in which clients use art material, the creative process, and the resulting artwork to explore their feelings reconcile conflicts, foster self-awareness, manage behavior and addictions, develop social skills, improve reality orientation, reduce anxiety, and increase self-awareness, self-esteem. I would like you to reconsider your decision to cancel the program as it is vital to our students for the above listed reasons. It may inspire future artists so we'll keep some of our students in school. Thank you for your consideration. Our next is from Kristen Foster, to whom it may concern. I am writing to express the extreme sadness I feel after hearing that the art program for the elementary students of our district will be eliminated. As I understand the budget is impacted and something has to give, I truly believe that the art program is not what should be taking away from our students. Art is a huge part of a child's continued growth and development. It allows them to express themselves and to find new interests, all which is a part of their social emotional development. As an early childhood teacher, art is a huge part of my students' growth and development, which should not stop there. It should be offered in a way that it continues into their adult life. Having art class is what many students look forward to. and allows them to find their creative side or express an interest that they didn't know they had. Please reconsider the elimination of the art program 
Our students deserve to have these opportunities. Our next is Liz Homer, Special Ed Para, Asbury High School. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the Asbury Park Board of Education. I hope this email finds you all well and your families in good health. I am writing regarding the recent proposal to cut art out of elementary schools and decreasing the amount of art in the upper grades. As a special education paraprofessional, art is such an important class for our CI students who are normally self-contained. It gives them an opportunity to be with regular education students, and also the ability to express themselves in art. Art is therapeutic to all ages and grades, and it will be sad to see it leave a district so that so desperately needs an outlet for creativity for the students. I appreciate your time reading this. Have a beautiful summer. Uh, our next email is from Ms. Maria Ocone. I wish to express my great concern and disappointment in the reduction in force of art education in the elementary schools. Our students deserve an opportunity to have a professional to learn about art. For many of our students, art is the outlet that provides them with a means to control and express their emotions in a safe, structured setting. They learn how to show their emotions and feelings, as well as learn proper techniques and appreciation for the differences around them. How are we going to meet the needs of these students if we take away art at the elementary level? Many day-to-day -day necessities, such as hand coordination and verbal expression, are acquired in art class. In addition, we are all different, and our students learn that in art class. Our art teachers are kind, giving individuals. They help guide our students to make good decisions. If our children lose this, many will not be able to reach their full potential. It is our responsibility as a public school district to provide a variety of educational opportunities to all of our students. The removal of art education goes against everything that is in the best interest of our students. Respectfully, I ask you to reconsider the elimination of art education with our certified professionals for the good of the students of Asbury Park. It's Wendy Glassman, Sunset Ave, Asbury Park. I have two questions. Please read aloud each one fully and answer each one. Number one, why after three months is this administration still refusing to enable true public participation in the form of oral public comment? If this administration is unable to take the simple technical or operational steps to allow voice public comment, why are you unwilling to accept the city's repeated offers to enable voice participation for these meetings? Until a person can ask a question or make a comment in her or his own voice, this meeting lacks true public participation. Number two, why are you cutting two art teacher positions? This is unacceptable. Again and again, the administration protects its administrative staff, which was cited in audits as excessive, and not even the monitor pushes for a reduction in administration. The administration and board chairperson insult anyone who questions their judgment about expenses with the retort, we're all about the children. Of course, implying that anyone critical of their actions as not having the best interest of the children in mind. Yet with these two post, uh, proposed reductions in staff, it is only the children who will suffer. How many studies do you need to see or ignore to know how important the arts are for uh, children's development? How many do you need to see or ignore to know art and music are important tools for helping children experiencing trauma and hardship in their worlds. Grade school teachers have heavy loads already with language arts, math, and science. Keep the art teachers uh, to do the work that they uh, know best to help the children flourish. Board of Education members need to stand up to this. There are other things to cut. All the choices are difficult, but the children will suffer in so many ways from this. Stephanie Kelly, the Asbury Park uh, Board of Education members. I'm writing you this letter in regards to losing art in the elementary schools. Art is an outlet for students to relieve stress and communicate their feelings. With social emotional learning becoming such an important part in education, why would you take away a subject that allows them to express how they feel? Art gets their mindset right for the rest of their academic day. Please reconsider this decision. Thank you.
uh, Danielle Petruki, uh, Learning Disabilities Teacher, Asbury Park School, CST. Dear Asbury Park Schools Board of Education, as an advocate for our students, and in particular those students with disabilities, I would like to emphasize the fact that our visual arts program provides our children with opportunities to be educated amongst their general education peers in an inclusive setting. Our expression also enhances self-confidence and self-esteem. In addition, art provides an alternative means of sens sensory expression, communication, understanding, and interaction with peers and the world outside of the special needs class classroom. Uh, Ms. Laura Badillo, my name is Laura Badillo, and I have been a teacher in Asbury Park for 20 years. When I heard about the possible elimination of our art program on the elementary level, I felt very sad for something so important that the children will be missing out on. Out of every special that my kindergarten friends have had for the past 20 years, art is the only Art is the one they have always loved the most. I feel taking art away from our children is doing them a true injustice to their creativity. Ms. Corinne Bobick, the Erisbury Park Board of Education members. I am writing this letter because I was upset to hear that art education in elementary schools will no longer exist. Art is an easy and therapeutic way for students to communicate their feelings. Since social emotional learning is very important with learning development, why take away art education? Elementary students who have had a hard time communicating use art to express themselves. Please reconsider your decision on taking away art education in elementary schools. Uh, Ms. Abigail Barker, dear Board of Education. I'm an elementary teacher in the district and I was so sad to hear about the elimination of the art program. Art is such an important part of a child's development. It is vital that elementary age students have the opportunity to express themselves through art. With their rigorous academic curriculum, it can be very difficult to have art as part of a core classroom schedule. Many of our students learn through their art teacher and then bring it back to their core subjects. We're even pushing for more project-based learning, which revolves around forms of art. If our students do not learn the basics, it will be more difficult for them to feel comfortable with this form of learning. Another reason I feel art is so important is because our students face so many hardships and without the ability to express their feelings and emotions through a paper art program is heartbreaking. I have taught all elementary grades and art is always a favorite. I've had many students say that if it were not for art, they would hate school. Our children have varied abilities and when they find something that they are passionate about and that they found uh, confidence in, it would be devastating for it to be taken away. Elementary art can lead to many college and career readiness avenues. Finding art as a young child, they may want to become a graphic designer or an art teacher or an illustrator or an art uh, professor. The opportunities are endless. Our district has been highlighting the arts for the past few years. And I just can't understand how we can highlight the arts and then eliminate art. I understand times are tough and our decisions have to be made, but I ask that you look at all avenues and consider the ramifications this may have on our students. Thank you for your time and consideration. Mr. Sean Hamilton, 84 Creek Road, Keensburg. In my 21 years educating the children of Asbury Park, I've never seen such an assault on the education of our children. Year after year, teaching staff are cut depriving our children of a world-class education. Again and again, we are told it is necessary due to financial constraints. The district's response is to repeatedly cut the very people who interact, interact and educate our children. Cutting those dedicated women and men who directly impact our children's lives every day is simply absurd. What you are cutting are pathways for success, a successful future for our kids. At the same time, we see an obscenely top-heavy central administration expand. Why didn't the board follow the state audit report and have central office move to a district-owned building? Barack Obama School is fully wired for any IT challenges and has the space. Additionally, why hasn't there been serious discussion about also moving the maintenance department to Obama? Why are we paying $240,000 a year for central office space? Why was the lease allowed to be renewed knowing full well of the district's financial situation? Why hasn't there been a reduction of the top heavy central office administration? Have any administration positions outlined in the current budget 
uh, but not but have not been filled, i.e. assistant superintendent, been abolished. We are all here for one purpose, to give our kids the best opportunity for a brighter future. We are not building a brighter future for our children when we are continuously dismantling the foundation on which this future is being built. Shame on us all uh, who see what's happening and do nothing to change its course. Uh, Ms. Jackie Visico Knox, uh, I am saddened to hear that our school's administration is going to be taking our students' art classes away in the elementary school. Our students look forward to and need their weekly art classes. Art is an essential part of our young children's social and emotional well-being. I am assuming that administration will be expecting our elementary teachers to provide an art experience within our daily instruction. As a second grade teacher in an ICR classroom, I can tell you there is not enough time in the day to end an art lesson. Central administration has been boasting that we are embracing the arts in our district. If this is so, then how can we remove art classes from the elementary schools? Art offers so much to our students. Many of our students struggle academically, and art offers an opportunity for success. It is an outlet from the demands of the classroom. Art has been proven to have an impact on the students' growth, both academically and socially. As a mother, I would be greatly disappointed in my child's district if they were to remove art from the curriculum. Our children need that outlet uh, and time in their weekly schedule to have fun and be creative. That creativity in the art class spills over into the classroom. One of the highlights of my week is picking up my students after their art class and letting them show me their creations. The look of pride on their faces is wonderful. Please do not take away our children's creative outlet and the look of pride on their face when showing someone their artwork. Leave our art classes in our schools. Uh, our next is from uh, Esther. I believe we don't have a last name here. Mr. Quick is great at his job, and I would like to say he should still work at Asbury Park High School because he is amazing. Uh, Ms. Kristen Bravo, my name is Kristen Bravo. I live in Ocean Township. I've been employed by the Asbury Park School District for 12 years. I was saddened to hear about the elimination of the art program at the elementary level. Art doesn't just allow young students to express their creativity. It also develops their problem solving and decision making skills as well as improves their fine motor and language development. These are all skills that spill over into their academic areas. Furthermore, society is seeking the creative minds, those out of the box thinkers. By removing art from our curriculum, it is stunting our students' abilities to compete with their peers around the world. They need the exposure of the arts and the experiences they gain throughout the process. Give them more experiences, not less. Our students deserve every opportunity we can give them. Ms. Laura Grapaldi, Asbury Park Schools, and a grade two Thurgood Marshall. Dear Asbury Park Board of Education, my name is Lisa Grapaldi. I've been the elementary teacher for 34 years, 23 years in the Asbury Park School District. I'm writing to you about the possibility of losing our art program for our elementary students. This saddens me to think that our students will no longer be given the opportunity to have this special time to express their creativity through art education. Art education is therapeutic to all students. To see the elimination of the program would be a great disservice to our children. I've worked with elementary art teacher, Ms. Debbie Falcone, for many years. She is adored by every student at Thurgood Marshall Elementary School. She is like a second mother aunt uh, to many of our children. She is creative, kind, hardworking, and compassionate. Our students need her in our art program. On Ms. Falcone's break, she takes her own time to teach math and reading to our students who need help. This is all done out of the goodness of her heart on her own time at school. Please reconsider keeping the elementary art program and look into other places and ways where money can be saved. Ms. Christine Underwood. Uh, my name is Christine Underwood. I live at 414 Prospect Ave in Neptune. I've been an elementary school teacher in Asbury Park for the past 26 years. I am very sad to hear the news that the elementary art programs are going to be eliminated. 
are a very important component to a young child's education. Art helps the artistic child feel confident. Elementary schools have artwork displayed throughout the hallways. The students feel proud when they see their artwork displayed. I feel that eliminating art would have a negative impact on the students. Please consider it a collaborative effort to find another way to save money while still allowing our students the ability to continue with art classes. Mr. Joseph Mancino. My name is Joseph Mancino and I've lived in Oceanport. I've been employed by the Asbury Park Board of Education as an elementary special needs teacher for 20 and a half years. It saddens and concerns me to hear about the elimination of the art program. As a special ed teacher, I feel taking away the art program is detrimental in the overall growth of students, especially special needs students. Art helps our young students learn and develop critical skills such as A, hand-eye coordination, projects that art teachers provide that include cutting with scissors, coloring, and staying in the lines. Folding or cutting paper into specific shapes are all important skills that are critical in helping develop good hand-eye coordination. B, self-esteem. Students will lose the opportunity of creativity when participating in an art class and feel good about something they've created. Something that has not been thought about is how the classroom teacher will supplement art into the daily weekly schedule. Due to a very structured schedule that includes reading and math programs that need to be followed accordingly, that does not leave much time, uh, if any, for art. With these thoughts and concerns, and many that aren't even mentioned, I would hope that you would seriously reconsider finding another way to save money. Ms. Karen Lee Schwarz. Asbury Park School District music teacher. Uh, to the Asbury Park Board of Ed, I've recently learned of the unfortunate possibility of all the elementary art teacher positions being eliminated and several district art teachers being terminated. I've also heard discussions regarding the possibility of art being taught to our children, not by an experienced, highly qualified and certified art teacher, but by the classroom teachers. I'd like to express my strong disagreement with these decisions and I sincerely hope that there is enough public community outcry and expression of disagreement to result in a different course of action being taken to address the current budget crisis. Classroom teachers are already tasked with the challenges of teaching, reading, language arts, science, social studies, geography, mathematics, citizenship, social emotional skills, computer science slash technology, and all the other things a classroom teacher and a special area teacher addresses on a daily basis in their classroom. Children should be receiving instruction in all areas by professionals who have dedicated their lives and careers to that aspect of their profession, such as art, music, and physical education, as well as the other academic areas listed above. In order to be successful in today's constantly changing world, children and students need a well-rounded education and the opportunity to interact with and learn from as many skilled, caring, and professionally trained educators as possible. I do understand that the district is facing severe budget cuts over the next few years and that cuts have to be made somewhere. It is my strong opinion based on thir over 30 years of teaching experience from grades K to 12, as well as access to vast research and data that supports my view that art and music are just as important in a student's educational life as any other subject. For some students, it is the main reason they come to school and find an effective way to express their creativity and individuality. The increased self-esteem and personal satisfaction they feel by expressing themselves in the arts carries over to their other subject areas and improves their success in those areas. Asbury Park Board of Education, please use your collective wisdom, experience, and creativity to find another way to address the current budget situation without compromising the education of our children and the livelihoods and well-being of our dedicated and experienced teachers. Thank you for listening to my concerns, as well as the concerns of our whole community, especially the children. Uh, Ms. Nina Summerlin, uh, regarding private food trucks, number 13 on page 15. Why have we not established a booster club with parents and staff to cater for the football team? Because the money could have been submitted back to the kids within the district and who would monitor the funds for being 
the funds being made by the vendor trucks? And if so, who would determine the split and where would the money be going? Uh, is Allison Kalarik? Maybe some of you don't realize that the design for everything you wear, drive, use in your everyday lives, like the shampoo bottle that you washed your hair with this morning, or the underwear that you pulled on afterwards originated in an arts class in elementary school. Every designer that I know had a passion for art since they were very young. Everything beautiful in this world comes from a lifetime of disciplined education in the arts. Art saves lives, and it's everywhere. It's all around us. I know that the bureaucrats have no eye for beauty. You're all concerned with the bottom line and making sure that all the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted and everything fits into tight little compartments. But you're robbing children of proper art education because you couldn't see fit to cut the fat from the top. It's so disgusting and I won't stand for it. You wouldn't want a neurosurgeon performing an appendectomy. Why would you ask the daily overburdened teachers of the Asbury Park School District to add art education to their schedules? That's our final comment. Okay. Thank you. The time, please. Eight oh seven. Time is eight oh seven, with the uh, public comment closing. Thank you, Madam Superintendent. I want to thank everyone who took the time, particularly the Blue Bishop family, who took the time to uh, write a statement and uh, submit a public comment. And listening to some of the public comments. A uh, point of clarification is that we are not cutting arts instruction in the elementary schools. Uh, we are going to have to do more with less. We have to right size our district. And in right sizing our district, sometimes decisions have to be made. Um, and in this case, the decision has been made or the recommendation to the board has been made that we will integrate arts instruction in a developmentally appropriate way for our students that are ages three to eight in, the, in our lower elementary schools. But we will continue to have a certified arts teacher that will provide art instruction for our students that are age grades four through 12. So we will continue along that um, effort because there, is a very clear understanding from this administration of the value of arts and education. However, we do have a declining enrollment and due to our declining enrollment, choices will have to be made um, regarding how we address our teaching staff and our student to teacher ratio. So um, this was one of the ways the administration made the recommendation and sought to make that address. Thank you, Madam Superintendent. And now moving on, um, State Monitor's report. She does not have one at this time. And now acceptance of minutes. Mr. Hastings. Could we have a motion on A210A to accept the minutes from last month's regular meeting? I need a second, please. Second. Question. <laughs> Roll call, Mr. Hitchens. Ms. Etienne? Yes. Mr. Lotaraka? Yes. Mr. Grillo? Yes. Ms. Jones? Ms. Lazinski? Yes. Mr. Pinkney? Mr. Saunders? Yes. Ms. Breach? Abstain. Ms. Arbaz Anderson? Yes. Motion's well, carrying. And we need a motion for A2, number 11, the revised school calendar for next year. Move it. Grillo. Okay. Moved by Mr. Grillo, second by Ms. Etienne. Question? Roll. Mr. Grillo? Yes. Ms. Etienne? Yes. Mr. Lotaraka? Yes. Ms. Lazinski? 
Yes. Mr. Saunders? Yes. Ms. Breach? Yes. Ms. Alvarez Anderson? Yes. Motions carry. Okay. Madam Superintendent, would you like to ask the consent agenda? Good evening. I'm requesting a consent agenda for items B1 to B8. Right. I need a motion. I need a motion, please. We need a motion. 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 Grillo, motion. Grillo, move. Grillo, second. Question. I have. Uh, it's Mr. Sinski. I have a couple questions. Yeah, on, uh, yeah, on, on B4, number five, uh, J and K, I was just asking uh, the secretaries that have transferred, they're going to, I, I'm assuming the seventh and eighth grade. I don't, I don't know that. Uh, at the building level, the discretion of the building administration will be there to assign them according to seventh and eighth, as well as nine through 12. Okay, I do have another uh, question, B6, number 16. I wanted to ask if uh, this title is in a collective bargaining unit. At the time of the special? No, they'll come in with the age. Yeah. I'm the, sorry, it is? The... Uh, Parent involvement specialists have generally been included under the aid category, the para category. Should this not have been uh, posted or was it as a uh, job? Because it's uh, extra pay for an outside of the realm of a position. Specialists, so we have them under the specialist category like the instructional coaches and the reading specialists and all the other individuals that show up in this way. Should this position, this job outside of the realm of the, the uh, regular workforce, and it, since it's a negotiated or collective bargaining title, should it not have been posted so that people had an opportunity to, uh, I guess, put their, their application in for the position? This technically falls under the guise of what we have traditionally allowed within this person's role and responsibility. So it's not falling under any separate or any other uh, post that it has in the past. My question is because it's outside the realm of the position, other other jobs that they're you know, posted as stipends or summer jobs, and people are able to apply for them. So I was concerned because it is a collective bargaining title that it hasn't been open to the unit. Thank you. I also wanted to know if what the per hour rate is because it's not designated here on that in individual uh, agenda item. $29 an hour. So I would imagine it should have been posted. Maybe it's something to look into. Thank you. Um, I do have a, one other question. Okay, the, go ahead. The CUSAC uh, a district improvement plan is not attached to the agenda. I did ask about it on Tuesday, and it's on our uh, it's on our agenda tonight, and it hasn't been attached. So I don't know if anybody anybody's had an opportunity to look at it. It is due July fifteenth, and I'm concerned because I haven't seen it. I don't know. Um, how the board or myself can vote for it if we haven't seen the improvement plan. Well, I reviewed it. I was part of that committee 
And so I met yesterday with uh, the superintendent and all those that were involved and we reviewed it and at least satisfactory. It shows that we have made progress in some areas. We have a corrective plan of action in place for, the, for two areas where we had scored um, below, 80. below 80. So in instruction, we scored 72. And in uh, HR personnel, we scored, was it 60, 65? 65. 65. And so there's a corrective plan of action that is being created and put in place. And the past improvement plans have been uh, created by the committee that originally was convened for the QSAC. And then the placement letter goes out to the board members. And then it's memorialized through the resolution item that was placed on tonight's agenda so that it can be submitted to the executive county superintendent's office. Well, my issue is that the CUSAC uh, report itself wasn't given to the board prior to the adoption of it during, I think it was the May meeting. Uh, I'm not sure exactly which month. And we got it afterwards. And now, knowing that it had to be due by July 15th, that we have not seen the improvement plan. And, you know, I, I just, I, I don't understand how... Um, I myself can vote for something I haven't seen. So that was my concern on that item. And so I, 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 the other thing I do want to say is this, uh, this individual um, item on B6 number 16, I really think that you should uh, table it till um, you can have an opportunity for the attorney to review it because I think it's going to become a problem because it is a bargaining title and it should have been posted. And I, I really do believe that you need to review that one also. Board Council, Adam. I just have to unmute myself. Uh, I'm happy to review it uh, in the event that it gets tabled or if the board would like me to review it, I'm happy to do so. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from other board members regarding the agenda? I'd like to uh, table number B6. I I would still like to table B6 number 16 so that the attorney can review it so that we don't have an issue with um, some uh, uh, negoti uh, collective bargaining unit coming back and saying that we should have posted it. I made a motion. If I may, just procedurally, um, and maybe somebody can correct me uh, if I'm wrong. My my recollection was that the superintendent asked for a consent agenda. I believe there was a motion. If so, there is a motion on the floor with another motion on top of it. So to, in the interest of clarity, uh, to the extent there was a motion made for the consent agenda, um, that perhaps may need to be rescinded. All right, so the motion was made by Mr. Saunders and Mr. Grillo as a second for the consent agenda. So I'll rescind my second. And Mr. Gr uh, Mr. Uh, Saunders, you can rescind yours. I will. I, I will rescind my um, second. Oh, my motion. Um, additional clarification. Okay, one moment, please. But there's a motion on the table, so can she make a comment? Or we have to. We can. Okay, so um, additionally, I want to just comment on your comment about B8 number number four. The resolution item was not for the approval of the district improvement plan. The resolution item is to approve the submission of the district improvement plan. And so this is what is being placed forward. I will have a copy here for your review if you would like for to sit with me or if any board member would like to go through the components of the QSAC district improvement plan. But this is not about having read and approved the plan. It's about approving the submission 
of the plan. I need a second on uh, Barb uh, Lazinski's motion. Yes, on tabling. Okay. Yeah, I'll second that. I'll second, does it? Okay, Mr. Lauderock, it is a second. The vote is to table B6, number 16, Ms. Lazinski. Yes. yes. Uh, we, we need to, is there a discussion? Okay, discussion. Any questions, discussion? Team. So, Ms. Lazinski, were you a yes? That's correct, yes. Mr. Lauderocco? Yes. Ms. Etienne? Yes. Mr. Grillo? Yes. Founders? Yes. Ms. Reach? Yes. 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 That item is tabled. Could we now have a motion uh, for the consent agenda B1 number one to B8 number six, excluding item 16? This is Grillo, move it. Second. Second by Ms. Etienne. Questions? Okay. Let's have questions regarding the agenda. I do have one more question, uh, I'm sorry, if I may. I'm sorry, who was asking the question? Well, you know, with this regard, this regard um, it's a question for uh, Mr. Hastings' agenda. Okay, well, we're not on that yet. Mr. Lauderaca, did you uh, Just requesting more background information on, uh, we're doing another year of interim um, um, the, I lost the number now. Mr. Um, Bramby, you're talking about. Yeah, special, yes, yes. Where I was on B. The B4, mm -hmm. item 4. Thank you, thank you. I lost it. Just some more background on doing interim for another year. Yes. Uh, we're looking to maintain the continuity of having that position was posted, a review of the applicants. We decided, I decided it was best to make the recommendation to continue for continuity purposes because we've made significant gains in, in the area of special education to uh, continue with the interim special services director. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Hi, this is Joe Grillo. I have a I have a question about um, B one two A. I just wanted to get a little more clarity on who would be teaching the students art and what certifications would they have? Because I, I didn't realize until just before that um, there there would be some certified arts educators there, unless yes. I I misheard. No, no. Um, the art instruction for our three-year-olds up to our eight-year-olds covered in a generalist setting. So our generalist teachers will integrate arts instruction into already woven into our curriculum. It's already part of our standards. We continue to implement STEAM, and the A in STEAM is also arts integration. So we're looking for our generalists implement the arts at that grade level, those grade levels, and then for grades four to twelve. The certified art teachers that remain in our district will be providing arts instruction there for creative scheduling and to ensure that we are in compliance with our New Jersey student learning standards. Okay, thank you. Okay, and our state monitor has a comment. Yeah, I'd just like to comment also on some of the uh, letters that uh, were read tonight and uh, kind of remind everyone that sometimes we get lost in the immediate and not think of a broader uh, uh, look at the district. We're not just talking about this year's budget cuts. 
we are losing as a district $24 million over basically a six year period of time. And that $24 million obviously has to come from all the various different areas. I once here had heard anyone give, show any kind of disrespect or in any way uh, demeaning uh, decisions concerning the arts. The arts are very important. Everything that everybody said tonight was, was correct. However, I'd just like to remind everyone, when you close a school district, as we have had to do with Obama, all of the other laws kick in. And if you're going to have one less building, you're going to have an excess of people. Fortunately for the district, uh, a great number of people were protected this year because of the great number of retirements that you had that were able to offset what normally would have occurred when you close the school building. So um, this was, these are very difficult decisions. They're not made uh, easily. It's very difficult for a superintendent to weigh every aspect and area of the school community when looking at the budget and budget cuts. But in this particular year, because of the closing of Obama, uh, many of those decisions had to be made based on excess staff. Now, when you look, someone, I think, um, in the letter writing referred to the uh, legislative audit. The legislative audit uh, was critical of the district when it attempted to reconcile the number of teachers based on the declining enrollment of students. We cannot create, obviously, nor would we want to, false schedules. Teachers have to have schedules and be fully employed in, in order to be um, receiving, obviously, their benefits and checks. So as much as we might want to save a, an individual, without getting into names or positions. It's sometimes very difficult to do that if you do not have a schedule for that staff member once uh, all of these other changes have been made. Second point I'd like to make is that there appears to be uh, a continuing, uh, I would say somewhat myth, based on all of this excess uh, administration in this district. That's not the case. Um, I, I understand that you can, it's very easy to look and say for someone, oh, there are too many coaches, oh, there are too many aides, oh, there are too many this or that. If you look at the, uh, even the new uh, uh, charts that are out, central office staff has the same title administrators for the most part that even some of the small K-8 schools have in the Monmouth County section. Everybody has a business administrator for the most part, regardless of size. Everybody has a superintendent by law, and these are laws uh, by so regardless of size. Sometimes they're combined with, with the principalship if they're very, very small but they do have that title and responsibility. Everybody has, for the most part, a curriculum specialist, regardless in their district today, regardless of what it's called or where that position is located. I don't know if of any school in Monmouth County, and there are about 54 of them, that does not have some type of curriculum supervisor, director, whatever you want to call them. Um, another position that's there in terms of the director of special services, which includes for the most part, all of special education and the child study team, that's a requirement by law. So I, I and the legislative report did not cite the central office for those kinds of position issues. So I don't know, for the most part, where most of that 
comes from. I know that it is very difficult um, to look at any of those positions. Now, the difficulty or the difference in Asbury Park may be that they are located here. Some schools may have them located out in the schools. But to make that point, um, and since I was mentioned as not pushing for the reduction of staff, that we have had a reduction in the administrative staff of the assistant principals. And of course, they bounce back through the tenure laws into other positions as well. So this is a very complicated, for the most part, process when you try to associate the needs of the students and the safety of the students in these buildings, which is paramount today in all of this country, I think, we would all agree, and also trying to protect the integrity of your program and meet the needs of students. Second, another point I'd like to make is that the person that mentioned central office uh, being relocated, that is under consideration. That has been on the central office agenda. It is being investigated. We have looked at even what we might do with the transfer of maintenance in addition to. It's simply not discussed yet because there is no plan or proposal that we can go to the board with. It has been not been finalized. And just lastly, uh, I'd also like to remind everybody, you know, we've been in a, as everybody well knows, a pandemic state for three to four months. So some of the plans that may have come about earlier have been delayed or put on the back burner in attempting to address the other kinds of, of situations that have actually come up. But they are all under consideration. And as we move forward and have more budget cuts that we have to face next year, uh, you're probably again going to hear of reductions in some area that someone doesn't feel comfortable with. And I can tell you, starting with the superintendent, I know she's not comfortable with any of the cuts. But the reality of it is that uh, they have to be addressed. Thank you. Uh, Madam President, it's horrible since you have one more question. Just a second. Thank you, Madam State Monitor. Ms. Bozinski, yes. Um, I'm sorry. I do have to bring up the one item. I thought it was only on uh, the business administrator's agenda, but it's on the uh, superintendent's agenda. It's B8 number six, and it's the HMH uh, math program proposal. I was concerned that it's a six year proposal, and I was wondering what the logic was for such a long proposal. Yeah, sure. Um, the six year proposal is uh, based on the fact that um, we have um, started our uh, inter-math series in grades K to five. We uh, signed a six-year proposal for that last year. Um, this year, it was time to up, uh, update our math programs in grades six through 12. Um, this was always in our pipeline plan. Um, and therefore, we're now just implementing and going into inter-math and into AGA for the high school so that we can continue um, the, the program from all the way from elementary to the high school. Uh, these math programs are, are next generation math programs is what we've started on, especially given the fact that our part of what we're trying to do to improve test scores is to have a comprehensive math program. This is always part of a plan to do that. Um, the way that these, um, I call them subscriptions work, um, you pay um, the, the, the fee and then it covers all costs up until the end. In other words, we're not buying books every year. Um, these, everything is encompassed within there. Within that course, as you can tell, is any materials that we need um, and all the online components that go with it. All the subscriptions, the digital licenses, teachers, any materials the teachers need are all covered for those six years. Once we uh, start this process, there's not going to be a, there's not a recurring cost that comes with that. Um, but this is generally how um, working with these companies, the, the way that we work with them now is, is in this kind of licensing agreement. I didn't think the board could get into a contract more than five years, if that's my concern. Okay. And the length of the contract, you know, if things change in a couple of years, you know, you're locked in. 
So my concern to the attorney is six year proposal is that within our realm as a board and any of the concerns I have is the length of it. Yeah, so um, yeah, I haven't I haven't seen the contract, so I don't know what it says. But with regard to uh, contracts generally, uh, you're looking at not to bind the board for more than five years. This may be a special circumstance. I don't know. Could it be something that I hate to do this again that we could able or at least approve for one year and then have the uh, board attorney look at the additional contract to see what the ramifications are and what it's all about because I wouldn't want to violate any uh, regulations or laws until we have the board to take a look at it. So the way this is structured is more of a savings of one year. So with the six year commitment, it's basically by it when you purchase it for five years, they're throwing in the sixth year as a part of the cost. If we were to buy it annually, then we don't experience the additional twenty thousand dollars savings. So we I can still think, I still think to the board's advantage. I still think it's the board's advantage to make sure that we're doing this right. Um, I just have some concerns about the length of the contract. I know that, well, yes, maybe we'll, we'll save money, money but well, uh, I, I, it's still a six year I contract. Believe, I believe that this superintendent has looked into this. So, what you're saying is that it's a five year program, but we're getting a year, the six it, years free. Because, right, because we're going to implement this for six years, as we have done in the past. As a matter of fact, when I was, um, starting in the Asbury Park School District as the director of curriculum instruction, I actually inherited this program that has expired, which is why it's now time for us to implement a new MAP program. Mm -hmm. So if the resolution is better served, if you prefer for us to do this program, unlike we have in the past, and just do it annually, that is fine. We do need to adopt this program so that we can roll it out for our virtual summer school experience though we do need the program so if a modification is allowable for us because we have a proposal for a one year uh, um, one year purchase versus a six year purchase i have no issue with that we were looking to save the district money at this particular time where we are strapped for cash if um, the board attorney is saying it's allowable for us to modify that resolution item so that it could be for the one year, I'm happy to um, make that happen. Just one quick question, um, just to piggyback off of that. So they're charging us $19,971 per year because we're six years. So That is correct. So um, if we that's drop a, down to, if we drop down to five years, the cost per year would be more. That's how it, that's how it goes out. Yes. So this is, yes. Mm -hmm. That is correct. So can we pass the resolution upon uh, the board attorney uh, review and modify it upon the review of the board attorney? Because I'm just concerned with the six years. I don't think that's we can do that. I, I won't. I'm, pending I'm, attorney review. Pardon? Do a pending attorney review. Sure. Right. House. Pending attorney review. <laughs> However, if the attorney review is such that six mm -hmm. years or this whatever is not allowable, I would like to make it for the one year. Yeah, I agree that you know the attorney review will tell yes. us what the easy. year will be. Yes, I agree right. with Adam. What do you think? Yeah, I think uh, you should plan for an alternative uh, in the language of the motion, uh, yeah. specifically uh, pending attorney approval. Uh, it would be a five year or, or whatever you want to call it, six year. Um, however, if the attorney does not approve that, then um, it would be a one year agreement subject to renewal. Well, we're paying more money. Whoever moved it, do you want to modify your move in the second? Or are we not paying more money yearly? That's that's my question. So you do it yearly, you're going to end up paying more money. Do we know what the cost is per year if we went to five years? I think uh, right now the total cost it, it would be twenty three twenty three thousand four hundred dollars per year. Per year. 
So it's roughly four thousand dollars, from what I'm hearing. Yeah. But you went to the annually. Annual. Mm -hmm. So it's additional, approximately an additional forty one hundred dollars over time six years. So the additional, the additional. Well, you never know. The HMH might negotiate with you because of the situation where a six year contract yes. can do. That's the negotiation. Yes. Ms. Lewinsky, somebody else was speaking. So just a moment, please. Ms. Etienne, what was your? Oh no, I was, just, I was saying the additional year would end up it just. When you break it down to the 23, the additional year ends up costing us $2,000. That's the difference because it comes out to be $17,000 for five years at the 23 or 19, or I mean, that's, one, that's one, 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 seven for the five years or 119 for the six. So, can we approve this pending um, attorney review? Attorney review? We can do that, okay. Because you need to have this approved now. Yes. Okay. So we can approve this based on the attorney's mm -hmm. approval. Are you in agreement with that? If I may, uh, my concern is if the if there's an issue with the contract, I, I don't want the district to be in a position where they need to run a program and they don't have the ability to do so. So perhaps there's an alternate. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Mrs. Morris, did you want to say something? I was going to say if it's a, if your review it needs to be approved, I can do that. The beauty of having a state monitor. Yes. There are occasions. But wouldn't we just already have violated in last year then if we already did six years on that last year? You didn't do it now. No, now someone has to uh, modify their motion and second, I believe. Yeah, I thought it was five years last year. Yeah. So I believe I, I believe I made the motion. So um, I'm trying to figure out how I, I need to make a motion pending attorney approval, attorney yeah. review. You mean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's my motion. Okay, I need a second. And this must yet to, okay. And she agrees. You. You agree? I, I hate to interrupt. Uh, was the motion that Mr. Grillo made a consent motion or was it just for the one particular item? It was consent agenda. Consent agenda. Okay, so then it would be consent agenda with a modification to that particular item number uh, to make it subject to pending, uh, pending attorney review. Yes, that's correct. Thank you. Okay. Roll call, Mr. Hastings, please. Mr. Grillo? Uh, I'm voting yes on uh, everything except 2A. That's an absolute no. And I'm also abstaining from um, the summer. What is it? I'm sorry. I lost the, the agenda just now. Uh, the, the appointment for, for the summer program. I have to uh, abstain from Pedro Tivea. I need the page number. In the it office. is, hold on one second, uh, page number B2. That was, uh, that was C, uh, item 3B and uh, Pedro Tivea that's uh, on page, at the bottom of page B2. And you're saying no? He's He's abstaining. Abstaining. I'm abstaining to that one, and I'm saying no to 2A, the termination of the art teachers. Everything else is yes. Is that the end? Yes. Yes. Yes on all items? Yes. Thank you. Ms. Lazinski? 
Uh, yes, on all items. I'm going to abstain from B8, the QSAC dip, because I didn't get a chance to look at it. Thank you. Mr. Saunders? Yes. Ms. Breach? Yes, abstaining on B12A. And Ms. Alvarez Anderson? Yes. Pinkney's in the room. Mm -hmm. Mr. Pinkney? Yes. Motion's carried. Okay. Hello? Yes. Who is this? I just signed the one. Oh. Just for, for clarification purposes, Mr. Pinkney, when Mr. Hastings called your name, were you voting yes or were you just answering, responding to his, his calling your name? I was just responding to him answer, calling my name. Okay, I just so that, was not, that was not a vote. All right, so Mr. Pinkney. No, all right. We're looking at all items B1, number one, to B8, number six. On B6, number 16 was tabled. Yeah, um, I, okay. Um, so you're on B, B1 through B8, is that it? Yes, sir. Okay, um, I'm voting, um, yes, um, I'm abstaining on um, um, B1 number two. I think that's it. I think it's number two. Motion's carried. Thank you. Okay. Would like to ask for a consent agenda. Can I have a motion for C one, C one number one to C thirteen thirty four. This is Grillo. Move it. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I need a second. Second, breach. Thank you. Question? I have a question. Okay. So there's a reimbursement for a board member that's DOL. What is that? It's a blue. It's a transportation payment. So we have choice school and deal. No, no, no. For a board member. Yes. I'll get it for a For a child. Mr. Grill, yes. you have to uh, abstain from that. No. And then when yep. we um, and Mr. Saunders too. And when we um, I remember when we when we did the, the thing for the two years for the for this office, it was originally like seventeen thousand dollars a month. Now it's twenty. It went up by several percent. Yes. This is a shorter term contract. All right. So is that just for this year? Is it gonna go up again next year? Um I believe it's the same price for both years. Okay. Do you have any other questions? I, I'm done with my questions. Thank you. Are there any other questions on Mr. Hayes' agenda? I have a question. Ms. Lezinski. To follow, to follow up on Ms. Etienne's question on the uh, building, wasn't that additional money because of the storage in the other unit on 3rd Avenue? Or am I wrong? No, we had a storage unit on 3rd Avenue, which was a separate lease. That lease was terminated um, because the uh, agreement to do some improvements here at 4th Avenue were not completed. And because of that, they released us from the lease on 3rd Avenue. Uh, the lease expired on 3rd Avenue and was renewed for two years based on the current market rates. Okay, I have one other question. Um, C6, number 12, the HMH contract for literacy and math. How does that work into the other item that we have the attorney reviewing because of the QSAC dip in relations to math and literacy? So I don't it's want a to. One year agreement with HMH for this. Uh uh, literacy program. 
Isn't it literacy and math though? That's what it says on the agenda, and if I'm not cor not correct. Yes. The other one was textbooks. This is also math professional development, math instructional, um, uh, math professional development, as well as math interventions. Okay. So I just, want to, yeah, I just want a clarification on that. And it has to do with the, the uh, district improvement plan from, I guess, last year or which year? It's a part of our district-wide comprehensive literacy and math initiative. Yeah, it's part, it says a CUSAC dip. So it's last year's dip that we needed to adopt this for uh, the continuing year. That's my question. It says that it was referenced in there. Yes, we referenced our comprehensive literacy and our comprehensive math initiative in any and all of our long-term plans and our improvement plans. Right, and the QSAC plan is for is from last year's dip, or is there a new dip that we haven't seen yet that this is included in? That's my question. We have a new dip that is the resolution item that we were talking about before. No, we haven't seen. Correct. Of that. And then in our long-term plan, we've in the past made reference to our comprehensive literacy and math initiative. We've seen incremental gains steady, so we are going to continue to do what we see is working. We have, however, significantly cut back in our programming and in our partnership there by more than 60% reduction of that uh, initiative. As okay. you know, $4 million in the past. No, I understand. I just wanted to be clear as to what this was because it refers to the CUSAC report, and I'm assuming it's an old report because I haven't seen, or we haven't seen the new dip that we approved tonight. So I just wanted to clarify what this was. Yes, so for clarification, the resolution item tonight is not approving the dip, it's approving the submission of the dip as it is due July 13th. And will the DIP be provided? I will have it available for your review or any other board member's review. Tonight it, send, it should be tonight sent through so we can all see it. I mean, it's Ms. Lazinski, she said that she will have it available for your review and any other board member. Okay. Well, because, because of the COVID issue and for just for the board member's review, it could be emailed. It's just a document. It's a PDF. It's a few pages. It's not a big deal. If, if it could be sent, and I think all board members would like to see it because it has to do with our improvement plan that the administration developed. Yeah, and I'm, 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 it should okay, be you'll receive it. You're going to receive it in the email, okay? Thank you, thank you very much. Everyone I appreciate will get one. Everyone will get a copy of it. Are there any other questions? Roll call, Mr. Hastings, please. Mr. Grillo? <laughs> Uh, yes, on everything, abstain on uh, any reimbursements to me. Uh, also, uh, any bills made to uh, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield, New Jersey American Water, Dell. Hold on one second. Uh, and that's it. Okay. Just breathe. Oh, did you call me? I'm sorry. Yes. We're looking at all items on the business agenda. Yes. Thank you. Ms. Etienne? Yes. Mr. Lotteraco? Yes. Ms. Lazinski? Uh, yes, I'm just going to abstain on. 31 because I didn't have a chance really to review it because we got it at 551 today. Thank you. Mr. Pinkney? Mr. Pinkney? Yes on all. Thank you. Mr. Saunders? Yes, but um, as 
I mirror Jill Gorillos. Any reimbursements that, that were made to me, um, I'm upstanding. But everything else is I um I'm good with. Thank you, Sabas Anderson. Yes. Motions carry. Okay. So I need a motion. To, now we're going to go into executive session. So you have another call okay, in. If there's a question. Uh, oh, a question. Oh. oh, do you have any questions regarding? I mean, I asked everything out loud. So I guess I don't know. What's, uh, what's the executive session in regards to just so I know? Oh, I, I made a mistake. Never mind. So we're okay. So I need a motion to close. Hello, moving. Second. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Should I ask all, all in favor. favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Bye. 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 You have a happy uh, what, 4th of July. Thank you all. Bye. Bye.